Now joining us via Skype live from San Francisco, California, is Sir Richard Fitcham, the senior author of the study and director of the University of California, San Francisco's Global Health Group. Sir Richard, welcome to the show. Thank you. Sir Richard is also founding executive director of the Global Fund uh, to Fight AIDS, TB, and Malaria. Now joining us uh, via phone from Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, is Dr. Richard Kamui, an E8 ambassador and a board member of the Rollback Malaria Partnership. Dr. Kamui, welcome to Africa 54. Thank you very much indeed. Let me start with you, Dr. Kamui. We seem, there seems to be a lot of good news there when it comes to fighting malaria. What is your take on, the, the, on, this, on this progress, Dr. Kamui? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, indeed, there has been much progress, significant progress uh, has been made in Africa, especially in the last decade and a half in responding to, uh, to the scourge of uh, malaria. However, I, I, I must say that uh, uh, challenging challenges, including a huge gap in financing and broader health systems, a challenge threatened to stall the progress that is being uh, made. Okay. Uh, and that um, when you read yesterday's report, by, which was launched by uh, uh, WHO, uh, in the year 2000, for example, 13 countries had less than uh, 1,000 malaria cases. And by 2015, that is last year, the number of countries in this category has reached 33. And okay. I do know that uh, the next five years will be critical in maintaining momentum. Absolutely. And, yeah. uh, and uh, we, we will continue. And, 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 and Sir Richard, let me come to you. Critical years are coming ahead in the report. One of the things that you mentioned is the fact that uh, there is a warning that really that there is a need for renewed focus, new tools, and sufficient financial support. Tell us about that. What will it take? Renewed focus. What are these? What, what is it? Well, the, the leadership in malaria elimination in Africa uh, is coming from Southern Africa. And Dr. Richard Kamway is playing a very leading role in this. Uh, it is his country, Namibia and South Africa and Botswana and Swaziland, who are really leading the way to demonstrate that African countries can completely eliminate malaria from within their borders. And progress is very good, and we anticipate that those four countries will eliminate by 2020 in collaboration with their northern neighbors, Angola, Zimbabwe, Zambia, and Mozambique, together forming the Elimination Eight, which Dr. Kamway is the ambassador for. Now, there are challenges, as you mentioned, and I think the most persistent and systemic challenge is the question of political commitment and financial commitment. Because as malaria becomes uncommon, and then following that it is actually eliminated, political attention moves elsewhere, other health priorities rise, and governments find it difficult to continue to allocate the budgets to maintain an effective malaria control program. And we have a lot of historical experience that if malaria becomes low in your country, and then you take your eye off the ball, because it's out of sight, out of mind, mm -hmm. malaria will come roaring back. And we have, so seen, yes. we have seen resurgences in the past. Uh, Dr. Kam, tell us, uh, Sir Richard talked about political commitment with the Emination Aid Strategy in Southern Africa, and also uh, you being on the board of Rollback Malaria. What are you doing? What is the group doing in terms of uh, getting to have this commitment that is needed? Well, indeed, uh, uh, my good friend uh, Richard Fitcham is, is correct. What are we doing? Uh, the major aspect that we are doing relates to advocates. For example, uh, just yesterday uh, here in Addis Ababa, uh, we uh, commemorated um, uh, the World Malaria Day. Uh, where the main focus was, or the theme was, end malaria in Africa for good. We brought together 
uh, ambassadors and high commissioners, uh, the entire leadership uh, at AU level, experts uh, from all member states of the AU, and indeed um, uh, some ministers were present. We have now decided to mobilize, to talk to them, uh, putting emphasis on areas such as the ownership. Okay. We advocate uh, for the promotion, of course, of national programs, the ownership by the government, and of course the private sector and civil society to ensure self-sufficiency on the African countries to eliminate malaria. Okay. And another area that we are focusing on is that of mobilization of resources. And, and that leads me to my point. Uh, Dr. Kamwe, please let me get the reaction for Sir Richard because we're, getting, we're running out of time. Uh, speaking about funding, Sir Richard, you were heading the Global Fund uh, uh, initially. Uh, what can you tell us? Because there are some reports about uh, there is a threat of 31% decline in national funding uh, from the Global Fund. What can you tell us about funding? Well, there are quickly two dimensions to the funding. Uh, one is the domestic funding, the resources that each African country itself will dedicate to the fight against malaria. And those resources are already substantial and are growing. So countries are standing up to their own responsibilities, and Namibia is a leading example of this, uh, standing up for their own responsibilities to use domestic resources to eradicate malaria. Okay. But on the international front, the main source of funding is the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, TB, and Malaria. Okay. And it's important that the Global Fund maintain a focus on the elimination countries in order to shrink the map and get the job done. Okay, unfortunately, we have to... Unfortunately, Sir Richard, we have to leave it there. We're out of time. Thank you so much, both, for your time. And, uh, and that was uh, Sir Richard Fitcham. He's founding executive director of the Global Fund to Fight AIDS, TB, and Malaria. And Dr. Richard Kamwe, board member of the Rollback Malaria Partnership. And uh, that's Thank our you. health report for today. Thank you, gentlemen. To stay in touch, find me on Twitter at Lina Humudu.